hey everybody, this is a good place to say something important. Uh, actually, I should have said this in the first video. None of this is set in stone. Don't fall in love with any of this because even really foundational stuff can and will change if we feel like it needs to, to best serve the final product. There is no design that is more important to us than making the best game we can. We have no problem tossing stuff out, even stuff we love, like the cosmic die. It doesn't cause us any pain or strife because we only throw stuff out if it didn't work or if we got something better. So why bother hanging on to that stuff? Now, the things I talk about in these videos are usually less volatile, uh, meaning less likely to change, than if you're reading about it in a Patreon post. The Patreon, we post ideas there before we've even tested them. But if it's here on YouTube, that probably means we've at least tested it a few times internally, and it seems to be working. But no amount of internal testing can simulate having all of you folks pounding on it. So the real lesson here is, don't fall in love with any of this. It's all just a hypothesis until it goes to peer review. All right now, I think we're at about four sigma. Significant, but it's still a long way to six sigma. Anyway, when last we left our heroes, it occurred to us in our early testing back in January that we might be able to cut the attack roll entirely from the game, and that instead of just missing and basically losing a turn, maybe the goblin you're attacking could do a little something something. But also, removing the attack roll removes a step, a step I don't think we need. Remember, the only reason we're rolling to hit in the first place is because D20 games descend to us from actual tabletop war games going all the way back to the Kriegspiel. Well, in a normal war game, one player controls an army. Rolling to hit for each soldier makes sense because you've got dozens or hundreds of soldiers and your army's effectiveness is just, how many of my soldiers hit this round? An individual soldier hitting or missing doesn't mean anything. It's about this unit, this company, this brigade. Sometimes you're rolling buckets of dice where each die represents a single soldier taking their shot. No single die matters. But when you're controlling a single character, well, now one attack roll matters a lot because that single roll represents your PC and their entire action this round. And now missing sucks balls. I'm not running an army, I'm running a single hero in something approaching a heroic narrative. Rolling to hit does not model a heroic narrative. Also, with hit points and armor class, you end up with these very abstract concepts that people struggle with. They don't struggle with the game, they struggle explaining it to people who don't come to the table with all of these assumptions baked in. Oh, hit points don't mean actual wounds? Oh, really? Then why do you get hit points back from a spell named Cure Wounds? Why does wearing armor, which has mass, make me harder to hit? Surely it makes me easier to hit and harder to wound. Most people never worry about this stuff, uh, and I encourage that. I tell people, don't think too hard about it. It will not improve your experience. But it would be nice if you could think about it and it still made sense. Anyway, our game will have equally arbitrary abstractions. They'll just be ours. So back in January, we tried cutting the attack roll. You just go straight to doing damage. Now, we knew this wouldn't work with everything you can do in a game like this. We figured there'd be a couple of different roles. A normal damage roll, which works how you'd imagine, and it could be single target or area of effect. Then, an opposed roll where we both roll and compare the results. Like, if I'm trying to grapple someone, or, or throw someone off a cliff, or polymorph someone, or whatever. These roles aren't about doing damage, it's just success or failure, me versus you. Either I throw you off this cliff, or I don't. Either you turn me to stone or you don't. I got a little bit lost there with my hand signals. I don't think we have single roll, save or die stuff like that in our game, but you get the idea. But for a normal attack, you just roll damage, which uh, right now is 2d6 plus your stat mod. Simple. Originally, we had our own dice with different symbols instead of numbers, but that's, that's a story for another video. Right now, it's just 2d6 and it seems likely it will stay that way. So. No attack roll, you just do damage, but if you fail, your opponent gets to do something. Great. But if there's no attack roll, how do you fail? What is the trigger that lets your enemy do damage to you? Well, remember how armor works in the system. It reduces incoming damage. So far, we've done tons of tests and armor reducing incoming damage and correspondingly reducing how much movement you get seems to be doing the job. So, no attack roll, what counts as missing? Well, doing no damage. That's pretty simple. If your defense reduces my damage to zero, 
then you get to counterattack. Now, originally, a counterattack was a full attack, same exact thing you would have done if it were your turn. Goblin attacks me, my defense blocks all the damage, I get to counterattack. And if it's just a normal attack, well, then it should be able to crit. And in case you didn't know, critting in our game means you get to act again. Just one action, not a full turn, but wow, just that difference between like, you know, double damage or whatever, and a free action was a big deal, especially when there's no attack roll. You can't miss on your counterattack. Everyone liked that a lot, and we saw folks who read all this originally in our Patreon just adopt that crit rule for their 5e game. Now, this idea lasted for several playtests, and it was breathtaking. Combats went by way faster. But without reducing the amount of cool shit that was happening. By eliminating the null result, letting crits grant an extra action, letting everybody counterattack, we were basically taking all the cool stuff that happens in a normal fight and just compressing it all. Right? Because people were acting on their turn, but also, often, on the enemy's turn, and sometimes acting twice. So we ran an entire low-level boss fight against a necromancer and a horde of undead, and the entire thing only took, like, 45 minutes. Initially, this scared us. Surely that is too short for a boss fight. Have we uh, overcorrected? But then, we just shut up and listened to the players. It was only a first-level boss fight, and they loved it. All they wanted to do was talk about all the cool stuff that happened. It certainly sounded like everything you would want from an epic boss fight, just, you know, without all the boring stuff. I miss. Next. Cut that. So, super cool, right? Lots of fun. Surely this is the final design, right? No. I mean, you probably already saw the problem. Counterattacking meant you were rolling dice when it was not your turn. And then you could crit on a counterattack and act again? Well, at this point, everybody at the table was sort of losing the plot. We all think it's the tactician's turn because they just went twice and did a ton of cool stuff, but actually it was the goblin's turn and the tactician was only acting because they counterattacked and then they critted. Now, obviously we could add writers to these things, you know, conditional statements like uh, critting means you get to take an extra action unless you critted on a counterattack, which does nothing. In general, fewer conditional statements like this is better. There was another problem though. I was working on weapon design, that's a future video, and I needed an ability that balanced light weapons against heavy weapons. We want people to be able to use just daggers and have that option be about as useful or as cool as a greatsword or whatever. Well, I like the idea of a property for light weapons called fast. A fast weapon is so light and easy to attack with that anytime somebody attacks you in melee, you get to stab them first. That's what makes the weapon fast. I get to attack you before you attack me. I, I never imagined this as being a literal attack roll. That would slow things down way too much. I just imagined it as a quick stab. One point of damage, maybe. Like, like thorns in Diablo. If indeed they still have that. Something you could improve as you leveled up or with a magic item. But always a static amount. No die roll. Well, how does that work with armor? If armor reduces incoming damage, and reducing incoming damage to zero lets you counterattack, wouldn't all fast weapons just get absorbed by armor and trigger counterattacks? What about damage over time, like on fire or poison? How does that work? We had something called piercing damage that bypassed armor, but I didn't want to have to make all of these different effects piercing. That made me very suspicious. We invent piercing damage to make some attacks cooler, and now we have to use it everywhere. But I was suspicious of the wrong thing. I was suspicious of using piercing damage everywhere, when I should have been suspicious of the idea of counter-attacking. Remember, the problem with counterattacking is you're rolling dice when it's not your turn and quickly losing track of whose turn it actually is. James cracked it. I wrote all this down and he came back and said, actually, the problem is what counts as an attack. The act of attacking should require a die roll and it is this roll that armor reduces. Static damage like fast weapons or on fire, that's not a die roll. So it's not an attack, it's just auto damage and we just say that all auto damage ignores armor. That was brilliant, and it solved this whole other problem of whose turn is it? Because now you don't counter attack, you just counter, with an exclamation point. There's no die roll, so it can't crit, therefore no extra action, therefore players do not get lost in the middle of the turn, and no one forgets whose turn it is. This also means you're not discouraged from attacking. You know if you do no damage, the goblin's gonna stab you, but you also know it's just one point of damage. It's no big deal. We tried this out, and it worked great. It didn't just work great, it felt good. 
Countering is less spectacular than counterattacking, but it's also way more straightforward. It achieves the same effect, but with much less interruption of flow. Countering as static damage and static damage ignoring armor felt like a, a real step forward. It also meant we had lots of ideas of how different classes could have different counters. And even the same class might have different counters that you pick, and as you level up, you get more. We'll see if we implement that. We're not starved for ideas here, and this might be too many. But it's exciting to see the design get simpler and more robust all the time. Now, it may be that we just created an edge case where players only have one hit point left and don't want to attack for fear of dying to a counter. But A, having exactly one hit point is pretty rare. And B, that's not how dying works in our game. And I think that'll mostly solve this. But also, I like it when the player knows the risks and has to decide how desperate they are or how brave they are. And frankly, if you only have one health left, aren't you already worried and thinking about retreating or healing? So maybe there is an annoying edge case there, but if so, I'm pretty confident we can solve it. That's it folks, short video. I think most of these videos will be short because I think it's important to focus on bite-sized chunks of design. Our patrons already know all this. And in fact, they read about all this eight months ago. These days we're posting like actual classes and monsters and, and showing folks how to make monsters. Good stuff. Only eight bucks a month, link below. Next video, I think we're gonna talk about the dice. You're gonna love this. Until next time, folks, peace out.